And now, Saturday Night Theatre. Has Landed by Jack Higgins. Dramatised for radio by Peter Mackey with Ian Hogg, Michael Fitzgerald, Frank Grimes and Jack Higgins. The Eagle Has Landed. weather for your kind of work. What do you mean? Bit wet for digging. All right. Don't fall off the spades easy. I wonder if you could help me. This is a Catholic church, isn't it? That's right. All wrong with you. Get up here. Noisy bastard. I'm looking for a grave, or it could be a monument. Gascoigne, Charles Gascoigne. He was a sea captain. Where was he buried? About 1685. Ah, a bit before my time. Let's have a word with Father Vereker. Where would I find him? Oh, I'd say. I see. Thank you for all your help. I said, shut up. Go on back to Lindenbrock. Why did you say that? Say what? You told those rooks to go back to Leningrad. That's right. Why? That's where they come from. They've been ringed in Leningrad, and they come here in October. Winter's too cold for them over there. Is that so? Oh, terrible there, winters. Like during the war. Lots of Germans died in Leningrad. Not shot or anything, just froze to death. How do you know all this? Werner told me. Knew all about that. And the birds. Who was Werner? Werner. He's a good lad, Werner. Where did you meet him? Oh, I don't know. Werner, where did you meet him? Ah, Father Verica, wasn't it? Can I help you? Father Verica? Yes? My name's Higgins. I hope I'm not disturbing you. Not at all. I've just come from St. Margaret's at Clyde. I expect you know it. Yes, indeed. A beautiful church. I'm doing a series of historical articles for an American magazine. You're a writer. I found a tomb in the churchyard there. It had an interesting inscription to James Greaves... Who was assistant to Sir Cludsley Shovel in burning ye ships in ye port of Tripoli, January 14th, 1676. Oh, yes. Mr. Greaves is well known in these parts. According to my research, the mate on that ship was a Charles Gascoigne... And it seems Grieve had him brought back to Clyde to be buried. I see. But there was just no trace of him there. I also tried Wifeton, Blanford, Blakeney, but there was nothing there either. So now you've come to Studley Constable. That's right. Then I'm sorry to have disappointed you, Mr Higgins. I've been here since 1943, and I've certainly never come across any mention of your Charles Gascoigne. What about the church records for that period? Or the, the burial register? Mr. Higgins, I've taken a keen interest in our local history for nearly 30 years, and I can assure you that if there was any church document that referred to Charles Gascoigne, I would know of it. Now, if you'll excuse me, I think my lunch will be ready. Of course, I'm sorry. I won't take it any more of your time. You have a very beautiful church. Yes, we're rather proud of it. I'm sorry I couldn't be of more help. Thank you anyway. Do you mind if I look round while I'm here? Well... No. That is... No. No, of course not. I think you'll find some of our stones quite interesting. Mostly 18th century. Good day to you, Mr. Egan. Good day, Father. Annie Waters, aged 35 years, called into everlasting service, 4th of November, 1783. 
Matthew Butler, devoted husband to Anne and loving father to Sarah and William. In loving memory of William Grant, who departed this life, 10th of January, 17th. That's odd. Curious, sir. Curious. Two slabs, one on top of the other. That's impossible. Here, ruin. Oberstleutnant Kurt Steiner und 13 Deutsche Forschung Jager gefallen am 6. November 1943. Here lies Lieutenant Colonel Kurt Steiner and 13 German paratroopers killed in action on the 6th of November 1943. Killed in action? 1943? What do you think you're doing? You're just in time. I found something. You've moved from the stones. Take a look at what's underneath. This is sacrilege. Well, if that's what it is, I'm sorry. But the inscription makes very interesting reading. Put back that stone and leave. Here lies Lieutenant Colonel Kurt Steiner and 13 German paratroopers killed in action on the 6th of November, 1943. Well, Father, I'd say that was a bit out of the ordinary, wouldn't you? Please, replace the original stone. Who was he? Who was Kurt Steiner? I haven't the slightest idea. In your own churchyard? Besides, you were here in 1943. What's it all about? For the last time, will you put that stone back as you found it? No. I must ask you to forget what you've seen. I can't do that. Very well. You'll oblige me by leaving here at once. That's what you want. If you come back, I shall have no hesitation in sending for the police. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. What'll it be? Well, let's see. Vodka and tonic. Make it a double, will you? Right you are. Nice pub you've got here. Oh, we like it. Nice and peaceful. That's village life for you. A bit different to what you're used to, I expect. It certainly is. There you are. Chap sitting in the corner there, what's he drinking? Laker. Bottle of brown ale. Give him another, would you? No, him, do you? Well, sort of. I met him up at the church. Oh, yeah? Should think he's worked up quite a thirst by now. Uh, I'd say. There we are, then. One for yourself. All right, thanks. Keep the change, then, and have it later. Thank you very much. Hello there. Oh, you again? That's what you could do with a refill. Yeah. How's it going, then? How do you mean? Well, I've finished the hole you were digging. Oh, just a bit. Must keep you fit. Oh, depends on it. Depends on how many of them need holes dug. I expect you've seen a few go. How long have you been at St. Mary's? Forty-one years. So you were there before the war? That's right. And anyone who's died since you've been here, I mean, you'd probably know them. Why did not? Did you know Steiner? Steiner? Tell me about him. Tell me about Steiner. Come on, Laker. Time you were back at work. Oh, you've still got a half a pint of here. Can't help that. No, look here. No. That'll do. Out. Oh. Come to Sunday when a fella can't even finish his day, eh? Oh, yeah. well, thank you. Right, sir. Time, please. Time? That's what I said. Another half hour yet. This is a free house. If I say I'm closing at 2.30, then 2.30 it is. So I'd drink up if I were you, sir. Perhaps I'd prefer to take my time. If you know what's good for you, you'll do as he says. All right, Arthur. I don't think it is all right. I don't think our friend here knows we don't want his sort round these parts. I said, that'll do, Arthur. And I don't think he knows how we feel about folks who come poking their nose into things that ain't none of their business. Put it away, Arthur. I said, put the gun away. Oh. Now you had better go. Right now. Get in your car and drive away from here and don't ever come back. There to you go, did they? Looks that way. Funny lad they are. Who's the big fellow with the beard? Arthur Seymour. 
Got to watch him. Never know what he's going to do. Your name's Laker, isn't it? That's right. Laker Amsby. Unusual name. Don't know about that. Want to know something, Laker? I might. I think you know a great deal more than you let on. I might. <laughs> How much? What do you mean? What's it worth to you? To know about Stider. That much? All right. Oh, no. Answers first. What do you want to know? There's a stone in your churchyard that covers the bodies of one German officer and 13 German paratroopers, all killed in action 1943. So, Kurt Steiner, who was he? Oh, that's easy. He was a German lad. Came here with his man to shoot Mr. Churchill. Good morning, gentlemen. Good morning. I knew you, Jay. You are well? Better for being here at Rustenburg, my Fuhrer. Not too tired after your trip, I trust. A little exercise from time to time is good for one. Of course. Perhaps we should arrange to have you rescued more often, eh? <laughs> Give you even more exercise. <laughs> <laughs> one can have too much of such a good thing. Quite. Now, if you will excuse me, my Führer, I think the excitement of yesterday... Of course. Uh, may I suggest a stroll in the grounds, followed by some rest? We will meet for lunch. I look forward to it. Please excuse me, gentlemen. Mm -hmm. Do A fine man. A fine leader. But a curious one. For example... I have no doubt that while he was waiting to be rescued, Canaris, he would have wondered exactly what had happened to your advert. Perhaps he will ask me at lunch. What do you suggest I tell him? Uh, our efforts have been concentrated on the Eastern Front, my Führer. Really? I would never have thought of that. Just shows that one person cannot know everything, eh? Please, all of you, please sit down. Well, gentlemen, having rescued the Duce, what should be our next move in Italy? What does the future hold? Herr Reichsführer, your opinion. A total victory, my Führer. What else? The presence of the Duce here with us now is ample proof of the brilliance with which you can save any situation. Total victory. Yes. Josef. I agree, my Führer. We celebrated first-class moral victory thanks to your inspired guidance. And you, Canaris. Herr Admiral Canaris. Do you also think we can celebrate a first-class moral victory? My Führer, at this very moment, the Italian battle fleet lies at anchor, and we have news of their intention to fight on the other side. Is that so? As for the new Italian Republic as proclaimed by the Duce, well, um, so far not one neutral country, not even Spain, has agreed to set up diplomatic relations. I regret to say, my Führer, that, in my opinion, they will not. Your opinion? Your opinion? I do not want your opinion. You're as bad as my generals. And what happens when I listen to them? Failure! Everywhere! Is the Duce here because of the high command? No! The Duce is here because I, I insist that they set up a commando unit. I insisted they raid the Grand Sasso and bring back the Duce. Because I, I... You that it was right. I implied no criticism to you personally, my Führer. My instinct told me that I was right. A handful of brave men. That was all that was needed. Without me, there would have been no Grand Sasso. 
Herr Reichsführer, what do you think? I accept your concept totally, my Führer. Totally. On the other hand, I have always been under the impression that an affair like Grand Sasso was exactly the kind of business the Brandenburger was supposed to take care of. Ah, yes. You're a Brandenburger, Canaris. You're a rare specialist. I seem to remember that when it was originally formed, this Brandenburg unit, it was called the Company for Special Missions. I also remember that von Hippel, its first commander, told them they'd be able to fetch the devil from hell by the time he'd finished with them. Now I find that ironic, Herr Admiral, because try as hard as I might, I simply cannot remember your Brandenburger fetching the Duce for me. Nothing! You have brought me nothing! 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 But with men like that, you should be capable of anything! Anything! You should be capable of bringing me Churchill out of England! Is that not so? Why not, my Führer? I agree, my Führer. Why not, indeed? By bringing the Duce out of Grand Sasso, you have shown us that anything is possible. Quite so. Well, Herr Admiral, you have a wonderful opportunity to show us what your Abwehr is really capable of. Don't you agree, Reichsführer? Most certainly. A feasibility study, at the very least. Surely even the Abwehr could manage that. My Führer, do, do I understand you to mean that you... Wish After I... all, it was an English commando unit that attacked Rommel's headquarters in Africa. Am I to believe we are capable of less? See to it, Herr Admiral. Bring me Churchill. I'm sure you'll come up with something. As you command, my Führer. Good. I knew I could rely on you. Now, gentlemen, the Italian situation. Come. Ah, Max. Good to see you. Come in, come in. My apologies, Herr Admiral. I've only just been told of your return. Now have some coffee with me and see if you can't restore my sanity. <sighs> as bad as that. Every time I come back from those meetings, I feel as if I'm in need of a keeper. Or at least someone is. Um... May I? Now, of course, help yourself. Ah, oh, it was all such a waste of time. Mussolini looked as if he'd been drugged, and Goebbels, while well, he was just hopping from one foot to the other like a schoolboy bursting for a pee. Himmler was his usual pleasant corpse-like self, and as for the Fuhrer... And, uh, more coffee. <laughs> <laughs> it's all right, Max. No hidden microphones. The office is checked every day. Mm. Anyway, all the Führer I wanted to talk about was Grand Sasso. And what a genius he was, and what a bloody miracle he performed. And why didn't the Abwehr do something as spectacular? Uh, as simple as that. No, you haven't heard the best bit yet. You know what he wants us to do. I'm listening. He wants us to get Churchill for him. <laughs> he can't be serious. He most certainly was. Mind you, that was yesterday. One day, yes. The next day, no. And tomorrow? Oh, who knows, Max? This Mussolini business has certainly gone to his head and thinks anything is possible. And the others? How did they take it? No. Oh, Goebbels was amiable, as always. But Himmler... Yes. He's going to be the difficult one. <laughs> always ready to back the Fuhrer. So when the Churchill business came up, he suggested the least the Abwehr could do was look into it. A feasibility study. That was the phrase he used. I see. And the Führer, is he serious about this? What do you think? <laughs> well, um, I... I don't... <laughs> 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 Poor old Max Radl. But you're right to be cautious, even if I'm not. No, of course he's not serious. 
probably forgotten about it already. Himbler's the one to worry about. He's after my blood. And he'll remind the Fuhrer about all this in a few weeks' time, you'll see. If only to make it look as if I don't do as I'm told. So what do you want me to do? Exactly as Himmler suggested. A feasibility study. Just enough to make it look as if we've been really trying. Nothing more. But you better get on with it straight away. Of course. And I better get some sleep. Tell Kroegel to wake me in exactly one hour with coffee. Very good, Admiral. Carl! Coming, Herr Obert. Yes, Herr Obert? I can't find the von Lubitz file. Uh, you took it with you to Paris, Herr Obert. I most certainly did not. I distinctly remember seeing it on my desk before I, I left. Uh, excuse me, Herr Obert, but I think you will find... I'm telling you, Carl, that file did not go with me to Paris. Your briefcase? May I? Very well. It's always the same when I go away for a few days. God knows what you all get up to, but it's obvious that no work gets done. The file, Herr Uber? Oh, Carl. I don't know what to say. I understand, Herr Uber. I have no excuse. I've lost many things in the service of the Third Reich. That does not give me the right to lose my temper with you. I apologize. Thank you, Herr Uber. <laughs> so... Carl, what has been happening? Uh, mostly routine, which I have dealt with. There are just a few things which need your signature. Good. I have also been working on that feasibility study. Oh, don't waste too much time on that. I only want you to go through the motion. Which is what I have been doing. Until this came in. Oh? A report from one of our agents in England. Mrs. Joanna Gray. Oh, yes. Cold name Starling. She's good, isn't she? Very good. What makes you so sure? She hates the British. <laughs> An excellent qualification. Her family were Boers in Bloemfontein. All killed by the British. She has good reason to hate them. And what does Mrs. Joanna Gray have to report that has so stimulated your imagination? Can't I you? would prefer you to read it for yourself here, Albert. Very well. As a matter of priority. Oh, if you say so, Carl. And uh, in return, perhaps you could produce some coffee. Well, Herr Obert? Uh, a moment. The map, Carl. Where's Sheringham? Norfolk. Here. Hmm. Um, on the Saturday, Winston Churchill will inspect the RAF Bomber Command Station near the wash. Here, Herr Hubert? Yeah. And then on to King's Lynn to visit a factory, after which, instead of returning to London, he'll spend the weekend at the home of Sir Henry Willoughby at Studley Grange. Five miles from the village of Studley Constable. Here. I see Purely private visit. No one in the village knows about it. Sir Henry, a personal friend of Joanna Gray. <laughs> so, Carl, uh, Starling may well hate the British, but she certainly has a remarkable ability to get them to confide in her. <laughs> Tell me about this village of Studley Constable. It's not far from the coast. Isolated, very rural... Nothing but beaches and salt marshes. Excellent. Who does Starling report to here? Hans Meyer, Herr Obert. Tell him to let you have everything he has on Joanna Gray. And then there's to be no more radio communication. You're to take over from now on. Do I take it we are to proceed, Herr Obert? Carl, are you familiar with the works of Jung? I know the name, Herr Obert. Well, Jung speaks of what he calls synchronicity. Events sometimes having a coincidence in time, and because of this, the feeling that some much deeper motivation is involved. Herr Obert? Take this affair. 
The Fuhrer has a brainstorm, and because of the success of Grand Sasso, he wants us to get Churchill for him. And then synchronicity comes into play in the shape of a routine report from one of our agents. Nothing much. Just a brief mention that in six weeks' time, Church will be spending a weekend no more than seven or eight miles from the coast in a remote country house and in a quiet part of the country, as quiet as one could wish. Do you understand now, Carl? <laughs> At any other time, you were just a filed Mrs. Gray's report without giving it a second thought. So we are to proceed, then. Fate has taken a hand. I doubt if we still have a choice in the matter. When is Mrs. Gray's next radio contact? This evening, Herr Albert. I want you to send her this message. Let me see. Oh, uh, oh yes. Very interested in your visitor of 6th of November. We would like to drop some friends in to meet him. Uh... Morning, Joanna. Good morning, Henry. I was on my way over to see you. You should have phoned. Oh, rather take the charge, and it's paid off. Well, here I am. Yeah. Well, look, it's, um, it's just that well, we're having a few people over on Saturday night. You know, bridge, supper afterwards, that sort of thing. Jean thought you might like to join us. How very kind. Yes, I'd love to. Uh, nothing too special, just a few friends. About eight be all right? Fine. Only... What's the problem? Well, it's no problem for me, but... Well, I was thinking of Jean. She must have an awful lot on her plate at the moment. Getting ready for the big event, I mean. I say, you haven't told anyone, have you? Of course not. You did say it was confidential. Well, I shouldn't have mentioned it at all, actually, but, well, I know I could trust you, Joanna. Mum's the word on Saturday night, old girl. Just for me, eh? Any of that lot get a hint of what's going on, it'll be all over the county. I'd do anything for you, you know that. Oh, would you, Joanna? <laughs> well, I'd, uh, I'd better be off. Got the area home guard meeting today. You must be very excited about Mr. Churchill staying with you. Yes, I am. Great honour. I rather think he's hoping to do a spot of painting that weekend. Hey, by the way, where are you off to on that bicycle of yours? Oh, just one of my usual bird-watching jaunts. Ah. I thought I might go to the coast. There's quite a lot happening at the moment. Well, make sure you'll watch out for yourself. Of course I will. Wouldn't like to think of you getting hurt, my dear. I'll be quite safe, Henry. Mm -hmm. After all, you have told me where all the mines are. Well, yes, I know. But uh, things may have changed. Things are changing all the time. You mean the mines? Well, yes. Have there been many changes? Well, nothing much to speak of. But I wouldn't like to think of you tripping over one. Then perhaps you'd like to come round to the cottage again with your map. Oh, would you like that? Yes. When? I shall be in all afternoon. I'll come round about two. I shall look forward to that. Excellent. Starling has done her work well. It certainly looks promising. Promising? Is that the best you can do, Carl? Oh, I know this was a joke at one time. Something the Fuhrer wanted on Wednesday and had forgotten by Friday. A, a feasibility study, that's what they said. Just get something down on paper, anything. Just so long as it showed we were doing our job. But now it's different, Carl. It isn't a joke any longer. It could be done. Yes, Herr Obert, I think it could. And doesn't that prospect move you in any way at all? Because, my God, it frightens me. <laughs> Let me see those charts again. So, we are agreed that a raiding party could be dropped on the beach. Here. Uh, depending on the type of aircraft... A Dornier or a Junker would hardly last very long over the Norfolk coast. Uh, not these days. Now, of course, it'd have to be something smaller. But you agree that, in theory, it would be possible to drop them on their beach? Agreed. To get them out again, I suggest an e-boat. It could slip in, say, here, between the beach and the point. It would be on a rising tide. And thanks to Mrs. Gray, we know there are no mines in that channel. Now, timing. The raiding party will drop on November the 5th and Churchill arrives at Studley Grange during the afternoon of the 6th. Uh, precise details of the raid itself will be left to the officer in charge, but assuming that it will be successful, that they will get to the e-boat, well, say, 11 o'clock on the Saturday. 
Mm. You have a problem, Carl? Well, one of concealment, Herr Oberst. Uh, to expect a sizable group to remain undetected for up to 12 daylight hours may be asking too much. They will not have to conceal themselves, Carl. Hmm? Tell me, if you wanted to hide a pine tree, where would you put it? I suppose the best place would be a forest of pines. <laughs> exactly. You must remember, Carl, that in an isolated area like this, a stranger, any stranger, would stick out like a sore thumb. And yet, according to Mrs. Gray's report, there are strangers passing through these very lanes and villages every week, and they pass without question. Herr Obert? Soldiers, Carl. Soldiers of Anubis playing war games. Ah. Hunting each other in the hedgerows. I can give you an example. Page two of her report. There. Meltham House. Eight miles from Studley Constable. And used as a training establishment for commando type units on... What's it? No less than four occasions in the past 12 months. Twice by the British... Once by Poles and Czechs, and once by American Rangers. You see, all we need are British uniforms, and our men can go where they please. Yes, I think a Polish commando unit would do very well. It would take care of the language problem, Herr Oberst. But the Polish unit Mrs. Gray refers to here had English officers, not just English-speaking. Uh, you will forgive me, but there is a considerable difference. Quite right, Carl, all the difference in the world. <laughs> if the officer in charge is English, or apparently English, our chances of success will be greatly increased. So, it would appear our feasibility study is virtually complete. I think the Admiral may be surprised at our findings. Herr Albert, the leader of this raiding party, he would have to be an exceptional man. Quite so. And, Herr Obert, he must be able to pass as an Englishman. But, of course, find him for me, Carl. I give you 24 hours. If you need me, I shall be with the Admiral. This is good, Max. Very good. Thank you, Herr Admiral. Quite absurd, of course, but on paper it does have a kind of mad logic to it. You better keep it handy. Himmler is quite likely to ask the Fuhrer if we've done anything about it. At least we can say yes. You mean... That is all, Herr Anmeran? That is exactly what I mean, Max. You don't want me to take this further... My dear Max, I don't think you quite understand. In the game we are all playing, the more absurd the idea put forward by your superiors, the more rapturously you should receive it. Then you put all your enthusiasm, assumed, of course, into the project. But over a period of time, you allow the difficulties to show. So very gradually... Your masters make the discovery for themselves that their idea just isn't on. And as nobody likes to be involved in a failure, the whole thing is discreetly dropped. It would work, Herr Anna. Max, you've taken the whole thing too seriously. Perhaps my remarks about Himmler worried you. Believe me, there's no need I can handle him. Your report will more than satisfy them if the occasion ever arises. Now, I expect you have plenty of work to get on with. Yes, Anna. But surely, if this is what the Führer wishes... God in heaven, man! Kill Churchill! When we've already lost the war! How is that supposed to help? At ease. Max, we've known each other a long time. Yes, Herr Anna. Trust me now. I know what I'm doing. Very well, Herr Anna. There you are. Carl 
Oh, Verica. What a nice surprise. I tried the front door, but I thought you might be around here. Someone has to keep the weeds down. Your garden always looks perfect to me. Thank you, Father. Father? Philip. That's better. I haven't seen you for a few days. Oh, I've been keeping myself busy. How about you? I'm all right. Probably dying of boredom or anything else. I can't believe that. I have got one piece of news for you. Pamela, my younger sister, she's a corporal in the WAF. Been posted to the bomber station at Pangbourne, so we'll be seeing a lot more of each other. You can meet her at the weekend. I look forward to that. You'll like her. I know you will. It's very important to me that you should. I... Joanna... No, Philip. You're right. I'll save it for the confessional. Philip. How about chess tonight? I'd love to. Here? If you like. Come about eight and have supper as well. Thank you. I'll say goodbye, then. Goodbye, Philip. God bless you, my dear. Rattle? Yes. Reichsführer Himmler presents his compliments. He would be most appreciative if you could find it convenient to spare him a little of your time. I will carry your briefcase. Thank you. After you, Colonel. Thank you. Thank you. Where are we going? Prince Albrechtstrasse, Gestapo headquarters. Colonel Radl, sorry to have kept you waiting for so long. Come and sit down. Wait outside, Rossman. I may need you later. Here, yeah, Rossman. Your briefcase, Colonel Radl. Thank you, Herr Rossman. I understand you earned your Knight's Cross during the Winter War. Yes, Herr Rossman. And you have worked for Admiral Canaris ever since. Would it surprise you to know, Colonel Radl, that there is very little that happens in the Abwehr that I don't know about? Which means I knew most of the contents of this report of yours. What I don't yet know are your feelings in the matter. Well, Colonel Raddle, will this plan work? I think so. And what does the Admiral think? I find that difficult to answer. Hmm. I admire loyalty, but in this case you would do well to remember that loyalty to Germany, to your Führer, comes first. Loyalty? Forgive me, Herr Reichsführer. I find it difficult to understand. A simple enough word, Radl. There are certain circumstances, events, uh, when definitions become obscure. I lost an eye on the Russian front and my hand. Others were lost more. Yet we still... I still serve Germany. Now, I still serve my Führer. You are to be admired, Radl. Unfortunately, there are those who would question this undoubted devotion to your duty. There are subversive elements at every level in our society, even amongst the generals of the high command itself. Does that surprise you? Oh, I sure. I can hardly believe In March that... of this year, high-ranking officers of the Wehrmacht placed a bomb on the Führer's plane, set to explode during its flight from Smolensk to Rastenburg. Good God. The bomb failed to explode. But it does serve to make one realise more strongly than ever that we cannot fail, that ultimate victory must be ours, that the Führer was saved by some divine intervention seems obvious. But I have always believed that some higher being is behind nature. Don't you agree? 
Of course, sir, right, sir. Which is why I insist that all members of the SS believe in God. So, traitors everywhere. In the army, the navy too, at the highest level. So you see, Radl, I have the very best of reasons for being sure that Admiral Canaris must have vetoed this scheme of yours. You see, it would not be in accordance with his general aim. And that aim is not the victory of the German Reich in this war, I assure you. I have an important phone call to make. Rossmann, show the Herr Oberst round for ten minutes and then bring him back to me. You might show him the cellars. You lose all sense of time down here. No natural daylight. Ah, yes. I think you'll find this interesting, Herr Oberst. If you please, Herr Oberst. This is something they are supposed to have had a lot of success with lately. Personally, I can't see much point in driving a man insane when you want him to talk. Apparently, they throw buckets of water on the wall there. Improves the electrical flow or something. If you look closely, you see where the roughness of the concrete has taken the skin from their hands as they clawed at it. Cigarette, Herr Robert? The Inquisition would have been proud of you. Don't be bitter, Herr Robert. It doesn't pay. Not down here. So, that's neither here nor there. What can I show you next? The point of the exercise has been made. Please take me back now. As you wish, Herr Robert. Terrible, the things that have to be done. Personally, it sickens me to the stomach. I can't abide violence of any sort. But that is the curse of greatness, Herr Oberst. It must step over dead bodies to create new life. I'm sure you understand. Just as I understand how you must long to see your wife and children again. How long has it been? Two years? All right, Fuhrer. What do you want of me? Why, it's really very simple. This Churchill business. I want you to see it through. But the Admiral does not. Mm, I see no reason why he should know what you're doing. You have considerable autonomy, do you not? But the Reichsfuhrer must see what an impossible position this puts me in. My relations with the Admiral have always been excellent. Naturally, my personal loyalty is beyond question, but what authority would I have to carry such a project through? You will have this letter. Read it to me. From the leader and the chancellor of the state, most secret. Oberst Radl is acting under my direct and personal orders in a matter of the utmost importance to the Reich. He is answerable only to me. All personnel, military and civil, without distinction of rank, will assist him in any way he sees fit. Adolf Hitler. As you can see, anyone who wishes to query that document would have to be prepared to take it up with the Führer himself. I take it you accept this duty? Of course, Herr Reichsführer. Good. What a business, then. This Steiner, the man you recommend for the job, you are right. I suggest you go and see him without delay. Uh, yes, Herr Eichführer, but n- now I know more about him, and particularly his more recent history, well, I feel he may not be interested in this assignment. He has no choice in the matter. Four days ago, his father was arrested on suspicion of treason against the state. General Steiner. He will be brought to Berlin. You can tell his son that it would be in his best interests to serve the Reich in any way he can at the moment. Such evidence of loyalty might well affect the outcome of his father's case. Is there anything else you wish to raise with me? Only with regard to Churchill himself. Is he to be taken alive? If possible. Dead if there is no other way. I understand. Good. Then I may safely leave the matter in your hands. 
Oh, Rossman will give you a special phone number on your way out. I wish to be kept in daily touch with your progress. Certainly, Herr Reichwehr. Very well. Herr Obers. Herr Reichwehr. Do you remember your oath as a German soldier? Of course, Herr Reichwehr. Good. Please remember that I regard failure as a sign of weakness. She needs a man, Karl. Herr Obersch? Mrs. Gray. Uh, she needs a man there. I don't see how she can do this alone. Who does Section 1 have in England just now? I doubt if they could help, Herr Obersch. British intelligence has had a remarkably successful run of luck in the past year. There must be someone. There has to be. What about the Irish section? Really, Carl, you know as well as I know, the whole IRA connection was aborted long ago. Mm, not quite, Herr Obersch. I seem to remember... Mm. Mm. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, here we are. Deflin. Liam Deflin. Of course. And he's still here at the university? So I understand. He also does a little translation work for us from time to time. Carl. Mm. You're a genius. <laughs> what time do I leave for Alderney? Eight o'clock. It's nearly five now. Right. I'll take Deflin with me. He might as well meet Steiner now. Get him for me, Carl. Now, Herr Obersch? I don't care if you have to turn Berlin upside down. I don't care if you have to call in the Gestapo. Just make sure Deflin's waiting at the airport when I get there. Very good, Herr Obersch. And Carl... Remember, the Admiral is to know nothing of this. We are under the direct orders of the Führer himself. You understand what that means? I have never doubted you, Herr Oberst. Thank you. Now, as soon as you have found Deflin, I want you to contact Joanna Gray. Tell her she must arrange cover for Deflin and that he will arrive on the 17th of October in the evening. Well, Mr. Deflin, what do you make of it? It certainly makes interesting reading. You think our little scheme will work? It's impudent enough. And I thought the Irish were supposed to be the crazy ones. <laughs> to tumble the great Winston Churchill out of his bed in the middle of the night and away with him. <laughs> now, that would be something to see. Because you hate the English. No, I don't hate the English. It's the bloody British Empire I hate. You wish Ireland to be free. I do. Then you're willing to go to England for me. Why not? <laughs> you already told me you believe Germany will lose this war. Fifty marks on that any time you like. But you're still willing to go. I know. I'm a fool. Will you just look at what I'm giving up? A nice, safe job at the University of Berlin with the RAF bombing by night, the Yanks by day, and food getting shorter by the minute. <laughs> All right, no more questions. The Irish are quite obviously mad. I was told that, now I accept it. Oh, that'll be for the best, Colonel. Although we mustn't forget the little matter of £20,000 you're going to deposit for me in uh, Geneva. So, Mr. Devlin, you also have your price, like the rest of us. Uh, the movement I serve has always been low on funds, Colonel. And I've seen revolutions started on a lot less than 20000 He's a hell of a lad, your Kurt Steiner. There's enough decorations here to start a factory. He's a brave man, a good leader. Your report doesn't say what he's doing in Alderney. He is with his men. Is that right? And is it a holiday they're having? They're serving with a punishment squad. Oh, you better tell me all about that. Uh, it's not important. Oh, I think it is. If I'm going to be part of an outfit that's going to be led by someone who's been a naughty boy then I think I have a right to know just how he's transgressed. Obers Leutnant Steiner was involved in an incident with the SS in Warsaw. Jews were being loaded onto a train to take them to Treblinka. And one of them, a woman, tried to escape. Steiner gave her assistance. Oh, that is naughty. Uh, he was also found guilty of gross insubordination to Brigade Führer Jürgen Strope of the SS. Even naughtier. <laughs> he has my vote. 
Yeah, and what were his men doing while the colonel was telling Herr Strop where to shove his skull and crossbones? Backing him up. Apparently they always do. I'm pleased to hear it. How did Steiner escape the bullet in the back of the neck? It would have been bad for morale. He's a holder of the Knight's Cross with oak leaves. And seven years bad luck, I shouldn't wonder. How do you mean? Irish joke. <laughs> So what's so terrible about Alderney they should be sent there? Operation Swordfish. Designed to keep shipping in the English Channel down to a minimum by the use of torpedoes. Were sent out from Alderney? Yes. Ah. Men of the punishment squad sit astride each torpedo and steer it towards its target. In this way they achieve greater accuracy. Well, presumably these drivers have some special dispensation to abandon their vehicles before the end of the journey. Only at the last minute. <laughs> and then go through the whole thing again next day. If they survive the first. So the man we're going to see could be down there right now, riding the crest of the waves on the back of a torpedo. Quite possibly. They have a much higher success rate when there's fog. dark in here. Otherwise as friendly a pub as you could hope to find. Good evening, Herr Obersht. We've been expecting you. Your name? In here. I would like to point out that men are being shot before now for this kind of behavior. Well, that really is very good, Herr Oberst. Now I'll tell you something funny. When we went operational here ten weeks ago, there were thirty of us. Now there are fifteen. What can you and this Gestapo shit offer that's worse than that? Don't go including me in this thing. I'm neutral. Oberstleutnant Steiner isn't going anywhere. Not with you. <coughs> Not with anyone. Thank you, Sturm. But I would prefer to speak for myself. <clears throat> I trust, Herr Oberst, that you are willing to put down what has just been said as misguided enthusiasm and let it go at that. Allow me to introduce myself. Kurt Steiner. A pleasure. And this gentleman... Everyone round here seems to think I'm your friendly neighbourhood Gestapo man. I'm not sure I find that too flattering. Uh, Devlin. Liam Devlin. Why are you here, Herr Oberst? I would prefer to talk to you in private. As you wish. This way. Well? You um, are serious about this. Of course. <laughs> Well, then all I can say is that you've been theorising in that Berlin office far too long, my friend. You have read my directive from the Führer. What of it? Oberstleutnant Steiner, you're a German soldier. That is a direct order from the Führer himself. And you seem to forget I am in a penal unit officially disgraced under suspended sentence of death. Besides, I don't like Adolf. He has a loud voice and bad breath. Perhaps you don't think it could be done. Oh, I don't see why not. If you've done your homework properly 
and those papers are accurate, the whole thing could go like a Swiss watch. But, uh, well, that's not the point. Surely the point is that five weeks ago you had 30 men, now you have 15. You owe it to them, to yourself, to take this chance to live. <laughs> or die in England. As you say, it could go like a Swiss watch. Yeah, and the terrible thing about those is that if anything goes wrong, even the tiniest part, the whole damn thing stops working. Well put, Mr. Devlin. Tell me something. Why are you going? Uh, because it's there. I'm the last of the great adventurers. <laughs> now that I can accept. To play the game. The greatest game of all. But it doesn't really help. You see, I don't think I owe anything to anybody. Not even your father. Go on. The Gestapo have him at Prince Albrechtstrasse on suspicion of treason. So, if I'm a good boy and do as I'm told, it would help his case. Bastards. You bastard! No, no, come on! Bastard! Let him go! No. Let him be! Don't you realise he's as much under the boot as you? If you want to have a go at someone, go for Himmler. He's the man you want. <clears throat> oh, best. I'm so sorry. I should have known. <laughs> We're all up the same dark alley looking for a way out. I can't speak for my men. They must make up their own minds. For my own part? Yes. I'll go to England for you. Good. You know, uh, I think it's worth trying this thing. <laughs> All right, getting Churchill alive or dead, that isn't going to win us the war. But it might make them think again about a negotiated peace. My dear Rodel, if you believe that, you believe anything. I'll tell you what this affair is going to buy you from the British, even if it is successful. Damn all. Good morning to you. Good morning. Mrs. Gray. M Mrs. Joanna Gray. Yes. I shall light a candle of understanding in the heart, which shall not be put out. Magna est veritas. It's privately. Great is truth and mighty above all things. I could do with a cup of tea, Mrs. Gray. It's been one hell of a trip. God bless all here. Ah, we wondered when you'd be coming in. I was beginning to wonder myself. A whole week of abstinence. Sure, it's more than flesh and blood can stand. George Wilde, I'm the landlord here, and you'll be Sir Henry's new warden. We've heard all about you. Already? Oh, you know how it is in the country. Oh, yes, yes. I'm a farm boy myself. You should have come in of an evening. Meet most of the village, then. Anyway, uh, that's uh, Arthur Seymour, and the old goat by the fire is Laker Armsby. Would you gentlemen join me in a drink? Oh, hold your brown ale, George. Arthur? I buys my own. Sir Henry's really looking after you, isn't he? Nice little motorbike to run around on, place to live. How does a newcomer like you get preference over them that's worked on the estate for years? I can only put it down to my good looks. Don't make fun of me, little man. Don't ever do that. Steady, Arthur. You walk soft around here, understand me? If I've given offence, I'm sorry. That's better. Much better. But in future, when I come in, you leave. <laughs> He's a bad lot, is Arthur. <laughs> Here, Mr. Devlin, have this one on me. I reckon you've earned it. Yeah, Liam, call me Liam. Is he always like that? <laughs> Ever since I've known him. Uh, the, the girl outside when I came in, the one with the pony and trap, does he have any uh, special interest there? Chances is, chances. 
Only she won't have any of it. <laughs> That's uh, Molly Pryor. Helps her mother run a farm over at Hobbs End. Seymour gives him a hand with some of the heavy stuff. And he thinks that gives him certain rights, I suppose. Why isn't he in the army? <laughs> Turned him down, didn't they? Perforated eardrum. Well, now, if that isn't an insult to his great manhood. Mrs. Gray said you had a bit of a rough time at Dunkirk. Oh, for over a year in the hospitals. Oh, she's a grand woman. I'm very grateful to her. If it wasn't for her, I, I wouldn't have this job. A lady. A real lady. There's nobody better liked round here. Huh? I cut my first packet in the sun. Oh, no. It's time I was going. 1916, it worked. Give him a pint, will you? I've got work to do. It was the first big offensive of the year. Perhaps we'll see you later, Liam. Excuse me, Herr Reichsführer. What is it, Rossmann? I'm very busy. It's General Steiner, Herr Reichsführer. What of him? He's dead. That is unfortunate, Rossmann. I told you to take care. It was his heart, Herr Reichsführer. A pity. Ah, take photographs and dispose of the body in the usual way. Very good, Herr Reichsführer. Only be discreet. His son must not know of this. Not yet. Hello? Well, well. And what brings you here, my lovely? I ride where I please. Quite right. And I sit where I please. Do you use these? No. Good for you. Smoking stunts your growth. And you with your green years still ahead? I'm 17. 18 in February. Have you very what? 22nd. A little fish, is it? We should do well together. That me being a Scorpio. <laughs> Why are you laughing at me? And what else would you have me do with you, Molly Pryor? How do you know my name? You learn a lot of things in a public house. Was Arthur there? Oh, yes. Seems to regard you as his personal property. Then he can go to hell. I belong to no man. Do you know that your mouth goes down at the corners when you're angry? Oh, I'm ugly enough, Mr Devlin. But you wouldn't throw me out of your bed on a wet Saturday night, now would you? Meant for you. How do you know my name? Oh, let it go to your head. Everyone knows about you. Please let me go. I have news for you. You don't know the first thing about me. Because if you did, you'd know I prefer fine autumn afternoons under the pines to wet Saturday nights. Stay still now. Now get the hell out of here before I let my mad passion run away with me. I told me all Irish from my mad. <laughs> oh, now I believe it. <laughs> will you be at Mass on Sunday? Do I look as though I will? Yes. <laughs> I think you do. <laughs> Come on! Oh, oh me, me. You idiot. Won't you ever learn? Excellent, Rodel. Really excellent. Everything would appear to have progressed most satisfactorily. Has the Irishman obtained the transport yet? Uh, Mrs. Gray did not refer to it in her last report. We have less than 48 hours. I'm sure he has the matter in hand here, Eichführer. I hope so, for his sake. Uniforms? As members of the Polish Independent Parachute Squadron, Steiner and his men will be wearing camouflage and smock and the English parachutist Redbury with a special badge. Who dares wins? <laughs> How dramatic. <laughs> you know, Rattle, this whole question of wearing enemy uniform is a matter of great delicacy, and forbidden under the Geneva Convention. True, Herr Ashford. In this case, it seems to me that a compromise would be in order. The raiding party will wear normal uniform under their British outfits. That way they will be fighting as German soldiers, not as gangsters. Just before the actual attack, they could remove these disguises. Do you agree? As you say, Herr Reichsführer. Are there any other points you wish to raise? No, Herr Reichsführer. Uh, report to me tomorrow. Uh, Herr Reichsführer. I really am very busy, Radl. What is it? General Steiner. <laughs> is he... Uh, is he well? Why do you ask? His son. Naturally, he's anxious. Oh, there is no need to be. 
General Steiner is quite well. You have my personal assurance, Radl. Thank you, Herr Reichführer. Ah, top of the morning, Mrs. Gray. Where the hell have you been for the past week? Now, what sort of a way is that to speak to a hard-working man? You can drop the Irish peasant act with me. Where have you been? Out and about. So I've heard. Riding around on that motorcycle with Molly Pryor on the back. Is that right? You were seen at a dance on Tuesday night. And a very worthy cause it was, too. Wings for victory. Leave her alone. I've tried that. You're drawing too much attention to yourself. Pass that spanner, I'm having trouble with the magneto. Oh. Berlin are worried about the transport. Are they now? Well? It's all in the barn. One three-tonner, one jeep, 50 gallons of petrol, a compressor, and enough khaki green paint to cover every stone on the shores of Loch Ney. And make sure you put that last bit in your report. You're ready, then? Yes, a company of American rangers have moved into Meltham House today. Shouldn't affect us. They're only there for a spot of training. We could have done without them. I wouldn't let it worry you. We'll go in my car tomorrow. I'll pick you up at 11. Oh, it's wonderful the things you see in a fire. Faces. Places you've only dreamed about. What are you reading? Poetry. Well, let me see. It's by a blind Irishman called Rafferty. He lived a long time ago. I can't understand it. Irish. The language of kings. Here. Anish Tiachtanari Leon Law Gul Conchina Is Therese Nefelia Breed or Doime Muchol. Now comes the spring. The days shall grow longer. After the feast of St. Bridget, I shall raise up my sail. Oh, that's beautiful. Ah, yes, Rafferty had the right idea. Liam. Is that Irish, too? Uh huh. It means William. Oh, no, I think I prefer Liam. <laughs> Do you know what tomorrow night is? Tell me. Bonfire night. I mean, we can't have a bonfire because of rotten old Adolf. I like a good blaze. Well, I could come round and cook your supper. And then we'll have a special bonfire night all of our oh, own. Jesus, Joseph and Mary, aid me. Well, what's that supposed to mean? It, it means you're 17 and I'm a very old 35. Come on. Time I was getting you home. No, we'll have such a lovely time. I can stay tomorrow night. Uh, not tomorrow night, my lovely. I have to go out. No. Oh, yes. Where are you going? Business. Can I come? No. I shall wait here for you. Uh, no, you won't. I shall miss you, Liam. I know. But the tragedy is... I'm going to miss you more. Happen to them. They'll be here. This damn fog. They'll never see us. I know they won't. Stop your fretting, woman. This is Eagle. This is Eagle. Give it to me. Are you receiving me, Wanderer? Loud and clear. Please report conditions over nest. Visibility poor. 100 to 150 yards. Thank you, Wanderer. Estimated time of arrival, six minutes. They just won't see us. Don't crack up on me now, woman. Help me put out the markers. What is it? We just heard from Radl here, Reichsfuhler. Well? The eagle has landed. Thank you. Keep me informed. Yes, Herr Reichsfuhler.
Father, I... Please, excuse me. Please. That was beautiful. Forgive me. I saw the organ here. I just couldn't help myself. Who are you? Sergeant Emil Yanofsky, Father. You play very well. I'm particularly fond of that piece. You play yourself, Father? I try. Not with your success, let me add. Father Derricka? Yes? Howard Carter. Independent Polish Parachute Squadron. Special Air Service Regiment. I'm very pleased to meet you. I might have known I'd find you here, Yanofsky. The Colonel knows my weakness for the organ. You'd better cut along and wait outside for the others. Yes, Colonel. And your church, Father. It really is quite beautiful. Yes. We're rather proud of it. SAS, aren't you? That's right. Well, shouldn't you be in the Greek islands or Yugoslavia, somewhere like that? We were, till a month ago. Then the powers that be decided to bring us home for special training. Although, perhaps home isn't the right word for my lad. They're Polish, you know. Like Janowski there. He speaks very good English. He's the exception. Most of the others can only manage, hello, and will you come out with me tonight? <laughs> Elite units are inclined to be a bit arrogant, Father. I understand. Now, Colonel, just what can I do for you? I was rather hoping you could put us up for the night. Well, I'd... I was thinking about the barn in the field next door. It's been used for this sort of thing before, I believe. You're on an exerciser. Oh, that's right. Norfolk today, Cambridge tomorrow. We'll try not to be a nuisance while we're here, but I'd like to give the lads a few tactical exercises around the village, just to keep them occupied, you know. Do you think anyone would mind? My dear Colonel Carter, Studley Constable has been used for military manoeuvres of one kind and another many times before. We'll be only too happy to help you in any way we can. Hello there. On it. You are working hard. Yeah, through it. Would you like a cigarette? English? Oh. oh. I won't say no. Please. Take two. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. You're foreign, aren't you? Uh, Polish. Oh, yeah. Thought you were British in that uniform. What's your name, then? Werner. Then I always thought that was a German name. My mother was German. Oh, yeah? Wow. We can't choose who bring us into this world, can we? Uh, tell me, please. The rookery. How long has it been here? Oh, since I was a lad. You interested in birds, then? Certainly. The most fascinating of living creatures. Well, them tatty old rocks? Oh, get away with you. Oh, it's true, my friend. They seldom fight with each other, and they know no boundaries. The whole world is their home. In fact. Oh, yes, indeed. The rooks you see may be residents of Norfolk, that is true. But did you know that many arrived during the late autumn and winter from as far away as Russia? I never knew that. Before the war, many of the rooks in this area were found to have been ringed in the area near Leningrad. And by turning up here... That means they have made a flight of over 1,500 miles. Cool, huh? That is quite remarkable. But even that may be considered as a short flight when you compare it to the journey that is made by... All right. Listen to me, all of you. Gather round. Now, this is where we're all supposed to be bedding down tonight. I need hardly add that if I catch any of you nodding off... Operation Swordfish will seem like a holiday compared to what you can expect. <laughs> <laughs> now, the object of the exercise is to make everything look as natural as possible. It won't be dark until about five, so we'll have to put on some sort of show till then. Klugel has a fine baritone. Oh. <laughs> yes, I'm sure. But we're here for field exercises, and that's what these people will expect. Basic infantry tactics. You know the sort of thing across the fields, by the stream, and amongst the houses. Oh, yes. There's another thing. Keep your voices low when you're speaking German. Use hand signals whenever you can, but if you do have to give a spoken order, make sure it's in English. What happens if someone tries to speak to us? Pretend you don't understand, even if you do. I don't want you to get involved. Leutnant Neumann here will be in charge of field training organization... Rita, make sure that each group has at least one person who can speak good English. Very good, Colonel. 
What's happened to Briegel? Anyone seen him? I think he was in the churchyard, sir. Yeah, we really. He was watching birds, I don't doubt. <laughs> Keep an eye on him, will you, Ritter? Yes, sir. Right, off you go. We'll rendezvous here no later than 4.30. <clears throat> Good luck to all of you. Fine bunch of men you have there, Colonel Carter. Thank you, Father. They've saved my life before now. A bunch <laughs> of schoolboys, if you ask me. No need for that, love. They're only doing their bit. Oh, I suppose you wish you were back in action again. Ah. Oh, man. I'll never understand you. Excuse me. Yes, young man? Are these your soldiers? They are. What's they doing? Well, we're pretending that the soldiers holding the old mill are Germans, and my men, they're going to capture them. Now, you see the chap on the ground? The one near the door? I think so. You see the way he's moving? We call that the leopard crawl. I expect you and your friends could do that, couldn't you? No. I'm sure you could. I'm sure they could too, Colonel. Isn't that what little boys were made for? Father, I think it would be a good idea if you got those two friends of his to move back a bit. Where's that? Boy and a girl playing on the footbridge. Oh, for heaven's sake, they've been told so many times. The girl's only a toddler. Perhaps you should have a word with the parents. Yes, of course. I don't know if I... Ah, yes. Betty! Yes, Father? Tom and Susan, they really shouldn't be playing on the bridge, especially after all this rain. Oh, I am sorry. I have no idea. Could you just get them back here, quick as you can? Yes, of course. Tom! Susan! It really is too bad of them. The stream could be so deceptive at this time of year. I'm sure there's no harm done. Sort of thing we might well have done. <gasps> What's happened? Oh. It's the girl! Susan! Dear God, no! Susan! Susan! Tom, no, you mustn't! Hold on. I can't. Oh. Please, dear Lord, please. Where's the boy? He went in to save the girl. A storm will get them. We must get ahead of them. There he is. He's got them. Hold on, they're coming. Quick, form a chain. Take my hand, Ritter. Go, go. I've got you. Storm. Here. This way. And push the girl towards me. suppose we even thought about it. How are the kids? They'll be all right. All right. Lay him down here. Easy now. Easy. Easy. Is he all right? Klugel. Try his heart. Sturm is dead. His head. The wheel has crushed him. Colonel? Yes, Graham? What is your soldier wearing that uniform? That's not what Paul's soldiers wear. My God. Give me your field telephone, Brandt. Hello, no, Bush. Eagle 1 to Eagle 2, come in, please. Over. Eagle 2, I hear you. Over. The Eagle has blown. I repeat, the Eagle has blown. Go to the church now. George, what's happening? You are Germans. Oh. I've seen that uniform before, when I was in Norway. Some of us were there. It doesn't make sense. There's nothing for you here. Yes, there is. They've come to kill Mr. Churchill. How do you know that, Father? Sir Henry Willoughby. He confided in me. <laughs> and we're still losing this bloody war. Ritter, there are 16 houses in Studley Constable. Take your section and search every one. I want them all in the church. Then set up a roadblock at each end of the village. We'll make it look nice and official, but anyone who comes in stays. Very good, Herr Robert. Maya, go to the general store. There are six telephones in the village, all connected to the switchboard there. Shall I rip it off? No. That might attract unnecessary attention. Present my compliments to Mr. Turner and assure him it would be in his best interests to put off anyone who makes an incoming call somehow. Off you go. Colonel. Yes, Father? I'm going to call your bluff. 
What bluff is that, Father? I'm going to walk away from here. You can't afford to shoot me. Can't I? Grant? The Mark II S-10. The British invention. You will all go to the church now. And perhaps you would care to lead the way, Father. You've obviously done this before. Mum's always liked flowers in the house. You've certainly got a gift for arranging them. Oh, thank you. Do you think some ivy would be nice for this one? You're the expert. Ooh. And I think it would be perfect. Mm. I'll go and get some. Oh, no, it's all right. I can go. It's all right. I'm there now. Well, not too much. Just enough for this one. Pamela? Something wrong? Come and look at this. Quickly! What is it? I'm not sure. No, don't go outside. Over there. Coming towards us. Oh, it's Father Vericary, your brother. And Mr. and Mrs. Wilde. And all the others. I don't understand. Look at the poles. How are they carrying their guns? It's as, as if they were guarding prisoners. And one of the men. They're having to carry him. But what does it mean? I don't know. But something's wrong. Very wrong. What could be wrong? I don't know. We need to find out what's going on. They're coming in here. We'll hide in the vestry. But what if they find us? We'll be all right. We can bolt the door. I want to know what they're up to. Quickly as you can, please. The villagers are sitting the fuse towards the front. Frank, you stay by the door. Nobody leaves. Father Verica? I feel we should take advantage of your calling. We haven't got time for a proper burial service, but perhaps you could find the right words for Sturm. He was Lutheran, but I don't suppose that matters. Catholic or Protestant, German or English. It's all the same when you're dead. Take him to the Lady Chapel. To the left of the altar there. Do as the Father says. Where does this door lead to? I beg your pardon? Did he say German? I think so. But that's crazy. What are we going to do? Shh. Sounds coming. Where does it lead? The vestry. Why is it locked? There are items of value in there. Church records, my investments. I'm afraid the key is over in the presbytery here, Oberst. I'm sorry for such inefficiency. Yes, Father. We Germans do have a passion for order. On the other hand, I had an American mother and went to school in London. Now, what does that mixture signify? That your name is unlikely to be Carter. Steiner, actually. Kurt Steiner. Of the SS, I presume. You really shouldn't presume that all German soldiers serve in Himmler's private army. Perhaps they just behave as if they do. Well, like Sergeant Sturm, I suppose. I didn't mean... Sergeant Sturm died saving the lives of two children from the village, but perhaps you'd wish to forget that. Perhaps it would destroy your pitiful delusion that all Germans are savages, whose sole occupation is murder and rape. At least it means Mr. Churchill will be safe. Well, why is that, Father? You've been found out, Colonel. You've lost the element of surprise. I think not. All we have lost is your cooperation. But as long as this village remains incommunicado until this evening, and I have every intention of seeing that it does, the attack on Studley Grange will take place as planned. You'll never get away with it. Just as long as we get away with Mr. Churchill. Amula, how many more to come? And this is all. Excellent. Please come in, ladies and gentlemen, and sit down quietly with the rest of your people. I would like to assure you that no harm will come to you as long as you remain seated and obey my orders. You will be staying here until approximately 11 o'clock this evening. Arrangements will be made to bring food to you, and I apologise that it will necessarily have to... What can I do? Get out of here. That's the fast thing. Oh, how? That's easy. But the Germans. There. Straight to the presbytery. It's so dark. Tunnels usually are. Come on. Oh, well, we knew the phone would be cut off. At least I thought Philip's car keys would have been here. Oh, Mrs. Gray has a car. Oh, of course. And oh, we could cut through the woods. We should make it. But then what? Straight to Meltham House and tell the American Rangers what's going on here. They'll soon sort Steiner out. Well, well, look, I came on horseback. He's in the woods over there. Why don't you try and get to Mrs. Gray's while I try another way, straight to Meltham House? You know, two bites of the apple. Good idea. One of us should get through. Mm. We'd best not leave together. Or shall I go first? If you like. 
Good luck, Molly. Oh, thanks. Take care now. Pamela? What on earth are you doing? Oh, I'm sorry, Mrs. Gray. I just saw your car and something terrible's happened. Colonel Carter and his men, they're not SAS at all. They're Germans. What on earth are you talking about? His name's Steiner and they're German paratroopers. They're here to kidnap the Prime Minister. But that's incredible. You had better come into the house. There's no time. I've got to get to Meltham House. You're not driving anywhere in that state. Now, come on. We can always telephone if we have to. But they've taken over the exchange. They've taken over the whole village. What are you talking about, Pamela? I think you are in need of a cup of tea. But are you serious? Yes, dear, but why don't you just sit down here and tell me all about it? I have to get to Meltham House. Of course. I'll come with you. I'll just get my gloves. Well, oh. you have been busy, haven't you? Oh. Mrs. Gray, I, I don't understand. And I don't have time to explain. But I won't hesitate to pull this trigger if I have to. Open that door. But why? I want you down in the cellar. Open it. You're one of them, aren't you? You're one of them. Get down the stairs. One of them. One of the Germans. No, not German. Quickly now. You're a spy. I said down the stairs. Liam? 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 Molly, my own true love, as As a great great man man once said, I have have suffered suffered a sea change change and nothing can ever be the same again. I came to Norfolk to do a job, partly for the Germans, mostly for myself and what I believe in. What I didn't come here for was to fall in love for the first and last time in my life with an ugly little peasant girl that should have known better. Try not to think the worst of me. To leave you is punishment enough. Let it end there. As they say in Ireland, we knew the two days. Liam. Devlin. You bastard. You bloody bastard. Tell me, Colonel. What do you hope to gain from this? That's a very good question, Father. I'm not sure I can answer. Germany can't possibly win the war. Most of us already know that. It's the one or two that think we can you should be worrying about. Joanna! Mrs. Gray! Pamela Vereker came to my house. She knew everything. Joanna, what are you talking what happened? about? She wanted my car to go for help. I've been locked in the cellar. She's wounded. She may not get to Meltham House. How long ago was this? Oh, 15, 20 minutes, perhaps. Which means she could be there by now. Joanne, am I to understand? Are you saying you're one of them? Of course I am. Just leave me alone. I've got work to do. But surely... I don't understand. You're British. British? Boer, damn you. Boer. How could I be British? You insult me with that name. Dear. Go back to your house and contact Radl on the radio. Let him know the position and keep the channel open. They will. Friends, at times like these there is little left but prayer. If you would all please kneel. Our Father. Well, Ritter. Who art in heaven. heaven. It seems we must prepare ourselves to receive some visitors. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth as it is. lady? I think so. Here, let's get you out of there. Come on now. Oh, thank you. Easy now, that's it. Can you stand? I, I 
I'm not sure. Well, don't worry. I, I've got you. Don't worry, you son of a bitch is driving that thing. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, ma'am. I didn't realize. She's hurt bad, Colonel. I, I think she's been shot. Okay, let's take a look at you. I'll be all right. I tell you, we'll get her into my office. You must her... listen. Don't I know you? Pamela Verica. That's right. And your brother, isn't he some sort of priest? Your father, Verica. Studley Constable. Sure, I remember. Nice place. What the hell have you been up to? It's the Germans. They're not Poles. They're Germans. What? German paratroopers. They're in the church. Oh, you better come and lie down, lady. Please, you must listen. They're after Mr. Churchill. Come on now, I'll get the doctor to look at you. No! Mr. Churchill is staying at Studley Grange tonight. He'll be on his way right now. The Walsingham Road, you must stop him, please. You must stop him. All right. Oh. We'll do something about it. Reckon you can make it to my office? I think so. Sure you can. Just hold on to me. Hustler. Colonel. Find Harry Kane. I want him in my office. On the double. Aye, aye, sir. Of course it's incredible, Harry. That's why we're going to make a name for ourselves. You're going in, then. What do you mean, am I going in? Of course I'm going in. I'm going to nail those krauts by myself. And I got the men to do it. Action this day, Harry. Churchill's personal motto. Who have you notified? What do you mean? War Office, GOC East Anglia. What the hell are you talking about? Have you any idea how long it would take those chair-bound bastards to decide whether I got it right or not? Sergeant Hustler! Sir, if I might respectfully suggest, the British War Office won't take too... Damn it, to... Harry! What's got into you? Perhaps you've been stuck by a desk too long. No, Colonel... Hustler, I want a detail of 40 men. We sure. move out in five minutes. Eight jeeps will do it. Let's go, let's go, let's go. I hear you, sir. I'll go in with four jeeps, Harry. You stay back and wait for my call. Do you think that's wise, sir? Scared of missing the action? No, sir. It's just that I... Don't worry, Harry. I'll leave some for you, and I'll tell you this. You'll be Major Harry Kane by nightfall, or you'll be dead. Come. Yes, Rosman. I'm sorry to disturb you, Herr Reichsführer. A signal from Landsford. Well? The eagle is blown. Show me. I have an errand for you, Rossmann. Herr Reichsführer? Take two of your most trusted men and fly to Landsford at once. Radl is to be arrested. Of course, Herr Reichsführer. And the charge? Treason against the state. Report to me as soon as you get back. Very good, Herr Reichsführer. And, Rossmann, should Radl give you any indication that he would try to escape, you will take the appropriate action. I trust you follow my meaning. Perfectly, Herr Reichsführer. <laughs> Why the hell don't they pull over? They will. Just keep your finger on that horn. What, they think they're crowds or something? They're slowing down. Pull up in front of them. Whatever you say, Lieutenant. I'll tell you one thing, sir. If this thing goes wrong, we'll end up in that Leavenworth stockade so fast you won't know what day it is. What on earth do you think you're doing? Well, Lieutenant Mallory, sir, American Rangers, Meltham House. What's all this about? Are you in charge here, sir? My name is Corcoran, Chief Intelligence Officer to the GOC, East Anglia District. This is Sir Henry Willoughby. Now, perhaps you can tell me what's going on? You can't go on to Studley Grange. Oh, don't talk nonsense, man. I live there. The village has been taken over by German paratroopers. Have you taken leave of your senses? They're here to kidnap Mr. Churchill. Oh, I've never heard such nonsense in my life. Can you substantiate this statement, Lieutenant? Oh, dear God Almighty, don't you hear what I'm saying? They are here to get Churchill. Here, now, today. Oh, don't you understand? What the hell does it take to convince you guys? Won't anybody listen? I will, young man. Tell your story to me. It don't seem to be as easy as a colonel thought. What's that supposed to mean, Hustler? Well, Captain, I reckon that means our boys are getting killed because the man in charge don't know the difference between death and glory. What am I supposed to do about that? Hell, you're the one with combat experience. I got my orders. We stay here. As long as you don't mind writing to all the widows, sir. What's happening, Krakowski? It's bad, sir. They're just using this for target practice. What's the colonel think he's doing, for Christ's sake? Colonel's dead. What Colonel? happened? We went to get that Joanna Gray bitch. Shafto went charging upstairs, waving that pistol of his, the one with the pearl handle, just like it was Errol Flynn or something. She took him right between the eyes. And the woman? Baker got her. He must have used near enough a whole clip. I guess that puts you in command, Captain. Yes, it does. So what you gonna do about it? We're gonna fight our way into the history book, Sergeant. And we're gonna live to tell our grandchildren about it. 
First, we got to knock out that bread in the water mill. Uh, you take six men and work your way around the back across the field. When you're in position, we'll draw their fire from the front. You and when it. I give you the signal, you better move like you never moved before. Colonel Steiner, you and your men have exactly one minute left to come out of the church with your hands in the air. I remind you again, when I walk away from here, this white flag goes with me. What do you think, Captain? Who knows? I wouldn't like to die in a church. Here they come! Not yet, Sergeant. Just the one. Colonel Steiner? Yes. Captain Harry Kane, American Rangers. Oh, best Lieutenant Kurt Steiner, Parachute Regiment. <laughs> Captain Kane, my sister, is she all right? She's fine. I left her back at Melton House. Well, Steiner, she's fixed you beautifully, hasn't she? Without her, you might actually have got away with it. You know, Father, I thought we failed because a man called Carl Sturm sacrificed himself to save two children's lives. Now, Captain Kane, what can I do for you? I just thought that was obvious. You surrender. There's no point in further killing. Your men at the mill are all dead. By now, the Prime Minister will be at Meltham House under as heavy a guard as he's likely to see in his lifetime. That's all over, Colonel. It would certainly seem that way, Captain. Honourable terms. No terms! You came here in British uniform. We fought as German soldiers in German uniform. The Geneva Convention expressly forbids the wearing of an enemy's uniform in time of war. It also prescribes the death penalty. So, your God is a God of wrath, Father. Don't look so troubled, Captain Kane. It's not your fault. The rules of the game and all that. You'll let the villagers go? Of course. You didn't really think we'd come out fighting, driving the women in front of us with a brutal hun? Sorry, I can't oblige. Mula, send them out. All of them. I go, sir. Thank you, Colonel. My pleasure, Captain. Oh, Mrs. Wilde. Yes. Your children, are they all right now? They're fine. I don't suppose they'll be playing by the mill again for a while. Colonel, I, I want to thank you for what you did, you and your men. I appreciate your saying so. Very much. Thank you, Mrs. Wilde. You've got a brave lad there. He jumped straight in. That takes courage. Why are you a German? Tom! Why aren't you on our side? <laughs> Go on. Get him out of here before he completely corrupts me. So, Captain. The final act. Let battle commence. Colonel Steiner, I salute you. Could you use an extra man, Colonel? Have you been standing there all this time? I have indeed, sir. And I don't think I've heard you silent for so long before. To tell you the truth, I couldn't think of a single damn thing to say except help. <laughs> well, gentlemen, it seems we have a fight on our hands. We're ready, Avash. I'm sure you are, Rita. I'm sure you all are. I must point out, it will be a somewhat one-sided affair. They have at least 30 men, there are only eight of us. They also have superior weapons. Once they start, it'll be over in ten minutes at the most. We have no choice, Obersht. As the man said, we wore British uniforms. Rather a bullet now than a firing squad later. Quite. <laughs> Is there no stopping that man? <laughs> they say Hans was playing in his mother's belly. I don't <laughs> doubt it. Now to business. We'll each take two windows, but watch out for grenades. Now, Ritter, I want you by the door, and when Altman's got... The window! Get to your positions, Mr. Devon. Take care of Altman, will you? Of course, Colonel. No doubt there will be others who need your assistance. Grenade! Can you do anything for him, Mr. Devlin? He's dead. Yes. I think... all of us. Just a few more minutes. Colonel Steiner? Colonel, this is like shooting fish in a barrel. We don't like it. We... I'll give you five minutes, Colonel. Five What's the situation, minutes. Mr. Devlin? Three dead. 
One walking wounded, and your lieutenant wounded, but not walking. How's your leg, Ritter? Uh, I'll be all right. Here? Put my jacket under your head. Thank you. Hold your fire. In the name of all that's holy. What are you doing here, Molly Pryor? I'm here, my right shoulder. And there was me, not even sure if you could read. There's a way out of here. There'll be a German coming with us. Otherwise, I stay here. Yes, all right. Ah, you little darling. Don't go away now. She knows a way out of here, Colonel. I told her you'd be coming. Did you now? We'll have to hurry. I can't leave without my men. Oh, but... If your men don't stay here to cover your escape... You... Besides, you still have a job to do. Ritter. I... Go on. Get out of here. That's an order. I'd better speak to the others. But there's no time. There's no point. It's the same as me. Very well. D- j- just help me sit up, would you? I... I don't think I can fire properly when I'm lying flat on my back. <laughs> Goodbye, Rita. Goodbye, Kurt. Good luck. Let's go. All right, Molly, my love. Lead away. Okay, all clear. Come on. Ah, you're a miracle, Molly Pryor. And I love you for it. Isn't this where Father Verica lives? Yes. Then that must be his car. Now, you're not going to tell me you've got the wherewithal to start it? Certainly. Huh. So it's not just the other who got the brains. I took them in the church. Just in case Father Verica had any ideas of trying to escape. Where does that lane lead to? Along by the fields. Does it link up with the ghost road? In about half a mile. We'll have to push then, Mr. Devlin. Come on. Can you steer, Miss Pryor? Yes. In you go then. Ready, Mr. Devlin? I'm your man. Let's start pushing. Don't tell me we're about to run out of petrol. This is where I leave you. You have five hours to make your rendezvous with the e-boat, Mr. Devon. I would be grateful if you would keep Miss Pryor with you till then. For your pleasure, Colonel. Might I ask where you're going? Meltham House. Oh. As Lieutenant Norman said, I still have a job to do. But they'll have more guards round them now than there are flies in a jam jar on a hot summer's day. Yes, but it'll be dark soon. And I think it might well rain. That'll help. You do realize that whatever happens, it probably won't help your father. I think I've always known that. Then why? Because I would find it impossible to do anything else. I don't understand. Oh, is it so different to the game you play? Easter 1916, long live the Republic. But tell me this, my friend. In the end... Do you control the game, or does the game possess you? I don't suppose we'll ever know the answer to that. Exactly. Good luck to both of you. Quite a fella. Well, Molly, my old darling, you could be in serious trouble for your part in this little affair. Nobody saw me get you out of the church. Nobody can prove a thing. As far as they're concerned... I've been sitting on the shore, crying my heart out at finding the truth about my lover. For God's sake, Molly. Poor silly little bitch, they'll say. Got her fingers burning, it serves her right for trusting a stranger. I haven't said thank you for what you did for me. I did it for myself. I love you, Liam, but that doesn't mean I like what you are or what you've done. The love is separate, in a compartment of its own. That's why I got you out of the church tonight. Not because it was right or wrong... But because I couldn't have lived with myself if I'd stood by and let you die. Molly, uh... No, don't say anything. Just start the car. I think I'm going to cry.
Got a minute? Well, sure. Uh, come on in, Colonel. Take a seat. Thanks. Drink? Well, yes, why not? <laughs> Hope you like bourbon. I, I think I can manage that. <laughs> so, what can I do for you? As if you haven't done enough already. It's been quite a day. Mm. I've just come from Mr. Churchill. He asked me to thank you personally. How is the old boy? Well, there you go. Oh, thanks. Bottoms up. Your health? He's fine. A bit tired, I think. This business came as quite a shock to all of us. Well, you're going to say that again. I've, uh, I've got some news for you. We found the car. Where? About a mile from the coast. Steiner? He's dead. What happened? The car must have skidded. Probably the rain. Anyway, he's ended up in a quarry. Possibly died before he hit the water. Either way, he couldn't possibly survive. They're trying to recover the vehicle now. He was quite a guy. So it would seem. If it's all right with you, I'll pass that on to the boys on guard duty. I don't think you should stand them down. Not yet. I just want to make sure they get some decent breaks. You need that on a night like this. Excuse me. You ever heard of Melton House? Yes, certainly. It's about three miles from here. Oh, thank God for that. Corporal Watson, they said. Go to Melton House. Quick as you can. Urgent dispatch for Colonel Corcoran. Don't tell you everything looks the bloody same at night. No. Especially now they've taken all the bloody signposts down. But if you have a map, I can show you the way. Oh, hang on a sec. Let's get some light on the job. But well, here, I'll hold the torch for you. Thanks. Now, let's see. I think... It... Ooh! Sorry, old boy. And I'm going to have to borrow your uniform as well. Sergeant of the Guard! What's your want? Dispatch rider! Can you deal with him for Christ's sake? What you want, bud? Dispatch from Norwich from Colonel Corcoran. Uh, straight at the front of the house. See one of the sentries there. You can't miss it. Just follow the drive. Thanks. Turned out to be quite a nice night now it's stopped raining. Yeah, that's one way of looking at it. Mind how you go. Thanks. You wouldn't remember the 1418 shindig, would you? I'm afraid not, Colonel. And why? I'm not going to bore you with stories about my experience on the song. <laughs> but it was quite a different show to this, I can tell you. I bet. The start. Trent... Uh, oh, gee, I'm sorry, Captain. I didn't know you were busy. It's okay, Sergeant. What's the problem? I just had a message through. They pulled that car out of the quarry. And? Empty. Steiner must have faked it. Well, perhaps he was thrown from the car. They'd better start looking for a body. It could be, but I'm not taking any chances. I want the guard doubled. Right, sir. Uh, oh, look, Captain, uh, as I came in just now, I saw Mr. Churchill on the terrace there. Don't you think you ought to keep inside? Thanks, Sergeant. I'll take care of it. Uh -huh. uh, anything happening at the gate? Ah, uh, quiet as a grave. Just that rider in from Norwich. What was that about? Well, dispatch for the colonel here. The first I've heard of it. When was this? About ten minutes ago, sir. My God, he's here. The bastard's here. Mr. Churchill. Oberstleutnant Kurt Steiner of the Jäger, I presume. I regret this, but I must do my duty, sir. Then what are you waiting for? Are you all right? Yes, Colonel. I think you'd better come inside. Strange. His finger was on the trigger, and yet he hesitated. I wonder why. If you could keep your visits as brief as possible, he tires so easily. Yes, of course. But he is expecting me. Oh, yes, and looking forward to it. He's in here. Father Vereker, Mr. Higgins is here. 
please. Would you like to go in now? Thank you. Mr. Higgins, it's good of you to come. I was sorry to hear you weren't well. Yes, I suppose it's cancer. Nothing to be done. Oh, oh, please, do sit down. Thank you. I expect you'd like to know why I asked you to come and see me. Well, I admit I'm curious. A year ago, you almost drove me out of your church. It's really very simple. For years, I've only known half the story about Colonel Steiner and his men. I suddenly find I have an insatiable curiosity to know the rest before it's too late. I believe you're in a position to tell me. I've certainly been busy since we last met. Would you care to tell me about it? Well, it all started when the Germans managed to get Mussolini out of Italy. Whichever side you happen to be on, it was certainly a remarkable feat, and that gave a certain German gentleman the idea that anything was possible, even the kidnapping of Winston Churchill. I couldn't find any trace of Liam Devlin after he got back to Berlin. As for Canaris, Himmler, Hitler himself, well, you know all about them. I think that's just about everything. That's a remarkable story. How on earth did you learn all this? Well, certainly not from official sources, just from talking to people, the ones who were still alive. I also managed to get hold of Colonel Radl's diaries. That was a stroke of luck. He was a very meticulous man, kept a record of everything. I see. You've been most generous. I'm grateful to you. Father Verica, I'm curious too. Yes, of course. What would you like to know? Exactly what happened here, afterwards. A complete clampdown. Studley Constable was taken over by the security people. Official Secrets Act, that sort of thing. Not that it was really necessary. We regarded it as our business, and no one else's. And the tombstone? After the engineers had cleaned up the village, repaired all the damage, that sort of thing, they placed all the bodies in a mass grave in the churchyard. Unmarked, of course. We were told it was to stay that way. But you thought differently. We all did. Those men. They weren't at all the sort that propaganda had led us to believe. Tom and Susan Turner. They're alive today because one of those men gave his life to save them. And at the church, Steiner let the people go. So you decided on the secret monument? Yes. The mason was a local man, and it was laid and dedicated at a private service. Then it was concealed, as you know. Mr. Higgins, do you intend to publish all this? I don't see why not. It didn't happen, you know. The stone isn't there anymore. Who is to say it ever existed? And have you found one official document to substantiate any of this? No, but I've spoken to a lot of people and it all adds up to a pretty convincing story. It could have been. How do you mean? Do you know where Winston Churchill was that weekend? The weekend that Steiner and his men came to Studley Constable? Go on. He was on his way to the Tehran Conference. Who was he? A man called Foster. George Howard Foster. Known in his profession as the Great Foster. Profession? The stage, Mr. Higgins. George Foster was an impressionist, a music hall act, and he did a very good Winston Churchill. He even looked like him. We will fight them on the beaches, that sort of thing. His audiences loved it. And so intelligence decided to use him. Exactly. If you intend to send your Prime Minister abroad in wartime, it's rather useful to have him appearing publicly somewhere else. Where's Foster now? Dead. A flying bomb hit the theatre he was playing at, 1944. I don't know if he was on the stage at the time. So you see, Mr Higgins, it never happened. 
and even if Kurt Steiner had found a way to pull that trigger, it would have been all for nothing. All for nothing. In The Eagle Has Landed by Jack Higgins, Steiner was played by Michael Fitzgerald, Colonel Radl, Ian Hogg, Liam Devlin, Frank Grimes, Joanna, Rosemary Martin, Molly, Holly Aird, Father Verica, Simon Carter, Canaris, Terry Malloy, Hitler, David Halliwell, Himmler, Graham Padden, Pamela, Kimberly Hope, Laker and Churchill, Roger Hume, Hustler, David Van, Neumann, John Dixon, Betty Wilde, Heather Barrett, Graham, Philip Malloy, Rossman, Vincent Brimble, Neuhoff, Neil Coker, Sergeant Hoffer, Geoffrey Whitehead, Lemke, Stephen Garlick, Arthur, Christopher Good. Jack Higgins was played by himself and the organist was Harold Rich. Other parts were played by members of the cast. The Eagle Has Landed was adapted for radio by Peter Mackey and directed in our Pebble Mill Studios by Philip Martin. Thank you.